Here's another word problem that people love. People love this one because there's a little bit more work than the last one, right? We just set up two equations, solved them, and we feel good about it in our hearts. This one, we can't just set these up because uh, if we solve for either miles or hours, that doesn't help us out because the two things it wants are in, we can look at those units, is miles per hour, which is speed. But we, it's, it's okay, it's, it's not that bad, and that's why we feel good about these is we have an airplane traveling 100 miles in two hours with the wind. The return trip against the wind takes three hours. What is the wind speed and speed of the plane in still air? So those are the two things we need. We generally just use X and Y, not that we have to. Some of you guys like other letters, and that's okay, but I like X and Y. So I'm going to say x is the speed of the plane in still air. Speed of plane. I can't write in still air because I ran out of space. And this is the wind speed. All right. Well, here's the thing is they didn't give us the, any of the speeds directly, but they... We can still find the speeds, okay? So this first one right here, hopefully that's not too small, is 120 miles in two hours. So that's, speed is always in miles per hours. So I have 120 miles divided by two hours. And again, this is with the wind. That gives me 60 miles per hour, per one hour. Question though, this is not the speed of the plane in still air. This is the speed of the plane with the wind. So it wasn't, it wasn't in still air, right? Now on the other hand, it, it told us that the return trip took three hours. Since it's a return trip, it was just the same distance, 120 miles. But now it took three three hours. This new speed, yep, 40 miles per hour, right? one hour. You could write MPH if you want. Now that we have those two speeds though, we're in great shape to set up two equations. And I'll show you guys a shortcut. I think I showed some people a shortcut. We'll see. Alright, the first, the first one we have, let's look at an equation with the wind. So I'll write that out. With the wind the speed of the plane is x. Since it's going with the wind, the wind is pushing it forward, giving it added speed. So I'm going to add the speed of the wind. What in the hell? So what is your equals then on this? If you have the speed of the plane plus the boosted wind speed, what is, what's your total? Excellent. Yes. It's Chase, right? Say that louder, Chase. Equals 60. How do you know? Because that's the speed of the plane with the wind. That's correct. Yeah, we found the speed of the plane with the wind. It's in red there. So this one is just going to equal 60. Airplane traveled 120. And that gives us our second equation. This one now is against. Well, that's a long word, against. Against the wind. So that gives me x, the, plane of the speed of the plane in still air. Yeah, but now the speed of the wind is going against you. It's taking away speed, so I'm going to have to subtract y. Hopefully yours looks better. Is this the same question on the test? And this one equals 40. It won't be the exact same. <laughs> All right, well, that gave us these two equations. Uh, we could use substitution, graphing, or whatever method you like to solve this. There are the yeah, if, if we use elimination, we can eliminate these right away. So let's let's get rid of that garbage yeah, and just look at this. Yeah, if if we just add these two directly, it's gonna eliminate the y's right now, mm -hmm. which is which is good. If I add the x's, I get two x's. Is that visible? Okay. The y's cancel out now, and I'm gonna add my totals, the speeds, which was a hundred. Now when I divide by 2, 
and get x is 50. Now, if we look back, what does x represent? Uh, speed of the plane. Yeah, that's the speed of the plane. So that's 50 miles per hour for the plane speed in still air. You could fill that in right there if you want. Is well, this isn't too air? bad. Yeah, meaning if there was no wind whatsoever. Okay. Kind of like a vacuum. And then <laughs> wind speed is 10. That seems a little slow for a plane, but yeah. maybe it's just me. This, this is the right <laughs> I want I They may have gone faster. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now I just go back to one of the two equations. I have x plus y equals 60 and x minus y equals 40. Which one do you guys want to use? The plus y. Plus y. So I got x plus y equals 60, but I see the value of x now is 50. So when I subtract 50 from both sides, I find y is 10, and y represents the wind speed. So the wind speed is 10 miles per hour. I just fill that in right there. Maybe it's a remote control It could be. Yeah. I accept it. All right, here's the shortcut. Wait, this is the long way? Let me take that back. This is the most difficult way to do it. Okay. I'm going to show you the most difficult way. You guys ready? So these were the two equations. We had x plus y equals 60, right? Mm -hmm. And we had x minus y equals 40. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't re really need any of that garbage. Here's why, is because we know that speed's being taken away from the, I, we can still look at it if it helps. But if I look at the middle number here, that's the speed of the plane. That's 50. Because it, it's right smack dab in the middle of 60 and 40, right? Yeah. And how far apart? right in the middle? I'm sorry? You could find the average if you wanted to and divide by 2, but that's not really necessary. Most of you guys can look at this and see what number is between these two? 50. Bam. There's the speed of the plane. Now, if the speed of the plane is 50, right, if you subtracted 10 from 50, you'd get this 40. If you added 10, you'd get that 60. So it's evenly spaced away from those two numbers. Which means that 10 has to be the speed of the wind. It couldn't be any other number, right? It couldn't. couldn't no. be any other number. Now, of course, this is a very special case. If you guys take calculus-based physics for some strange reason, you'll find that this isn't really reasonable. Mm -mm, it's not yeah, so let's, let's look. Let's yeah. look, right? Yeah, so that's be the well, we'll make up an example to, to expand on this. Watch so let's say that uh, you go, you're going to travel 200, uh, 320 miles in how many hours? Four. Four. In four hours, this is with the wind. This is with wind. And against the wind, it's going to take longer. Let's say six hours. So the return trip... Still 320 miles in six hours against wind. So if we find the speed with the wind. So x plus y equals 320? Did you set it no. up that way? We have to find the speeds first, right? So 320 by 4. That would give you 80 miles per hour. Wait, wait, wait. And then 320 divided by 6. 320 divided by 6, 60 miles per hour. So what's the speed of the plane in still air? 70. 70. What's the speed of the wind? 10. 10. 320 divided by 6 is 60. Oh, yeah, what the heck did I do? <laughs> it's what? 53.3 Sorry, oh. I, was, I was going too fast. Boom. Now 50, it's not even. 53.3. Wait, what? <laughs> Let's use something more convenient than... Do 8 hours. Do 8 hours. All right, 8 hours. Yeah. <laughs> Eight hours, that's better. There you go. That's garbage. Let's get rid of that. Because we're not going to give you decimals like that on, on any test. Right? So, yeah, that'd be 40 miles per hour, right? Now it's 60. 
So now it's 60 miles per hour for the speed of the plane, it's still air. Wait, 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 wait. oh, because they're 20s, okay. Yeah, and what's the speed of the wind? 20. 20. 20. Got you go. it. Because the middle, on a test. But the number right smack dab in the middle of these is 60 miles per hour. That's the speed of the plane. And that's because 60 is 20 away from 40 and 20 away from 80 as well. Yeah, if it's anything else, then it would be 